Jeff, thanks for uh, taking time. It sure yeah. is good to see you, and it seems like things have gone uh, mighty well, and they've been very busy for you. Yeah, there's no doubt, but good to be here, Dean. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. I wanted to ask you, uh, I was thinking uh, about the fact that you've worked for offensive coordinators yeah. as head coaches. Yeah. The, you've had three really good ones. Sure. But now you've got uh, Brent's a defensive guy. Yeah. Any differences uh, of note? Well, there, there's definitely some differences. I think the thing that I love about working for Coach V is, is the fact that he's got this aggressive mindset. You know, he, he is a defensive guy. He's been one of the best, if not the best, defensive coordinator in college football for, for a long, long time. And he's got this aggressive mindset that he's always taken on his side of the ball. So it, it bleeds over into the offense, how we want to play, how we want to operate, how we want to dictate you know, the flow of a game. And so that I think that's what's been so fun for me to see. And then the other thing is just having somebody in the room, you know, that's got all this defensive knowledge to be able to bounce things off of. And iron sharpens iron. We talk about that in, in, inside the locker room in our meeting rooms every single day. And so that's been, uh, man, that's been fun for me. Yeah. Fast, Yeah. physical, and fearless. That's it. Tell that, me about it. That's it, man. So we, uh, that, that, that's, that's what the goal is. Every single Saturday is for us to be able to go out and play fast, man, play fearless, play incredibly physical. I think when people watch us play, they're going to be able to see those three things. That's our identity. That's who we're going to be. Again, we want to dictate the flow of the game, and, and uh, that's what you're supposed to do when you got the football, and that's, that's who we'll be. Right, wrong, or indifferent, the, the talent that's been through here, they put up the numbers, won a bunch of awards, but it's been labeled more of a finesse offense. Now, I realize there are a lot of linemen in the NFL and sure, all that. Sure, but, but it's uh, how, how has the change been with the players from, from that reputation to what you're stressing now? Yeah, I, th I think the guys have, have had great buy-in, man. They've had great buy-in from a programma programmatic standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, everything that we've done, man, there's been incredible buy-in from the guys. So credit to them, but they understand we're going to have great physicality about us. I think you, you you look around the country and see who's won that game the last week in a college football every single year, and they're able to run the football at an extremely high level. So that's where it's going to start for us. We're going to do that. We've always done that. It's been, been our DNA, who we've been, and and we'll continue that uh, this year. I love it from the standpoint headed to the SEC. That's big boy football and, and some physical football. It can't do anything but help you, right? There's no doubt about it. It, it gets you ready and it gets you prepared for the trenches and, and what we're going to see every single week for sure. What about this playing fast? I've always I've, I've enjoyed it when you score a bunch of touchdowns. Sure. And that, that's the goal and, and that's the expectation. But at the same time, there, there has to be some downside. Yeah. You know, you don't get the first downs. You can throw your defense back out there. Tell us about your philosophy because you do want to play fast. Right. I, I, th I think there's a balance. You know, we're, again, we're going to play fast. We're going to be ultra aggressive. You know, but there's always going to be that balance of, if we're not getting the first first down, then we don't have the opportunity to play with tempo. And so making sure you're still putting the football team first and understanding how it all fits together from a week to week standpoint, drive to drive standpoint, understanding the totality of where you're at from a situational standpoint. And I think understanding those things will continue to create, you know, a, a great buy in and an understanding of how we're going to play every single series. Fans are very curious about what they're going to see on Saturdays from your offense and uh, offensive lineman splits wider. Yeah. I know you've done that some, wondering about that. But also the wide receivers are really flanked out wide. Baylor yeah. used to come here and almost lined up next to the assistant coaches right. and water boy. Um, what, are, what are the advantages of doing that? Yeah, I, th I think just creating clean pictures for the quarterback as much as possible. You know, and you're, you're going to see a bunch of different things. And, and the way we've changed from year to year, from Waco to – to UCF, to Ole Miss, to, to who we're going to be this year, you know, always trying, always changing, always trying to find ways to put our guys in positions of success because at the end of the day, our personnel is different than what we had last year, the year before, the year before that. So making sure that we're asking those guys to do exactly what they're good at and uh, creating the matchups that we want, but we want to create clean pictures for the quarterback and, and that helps us do that. Would you consider Dylan Gabriel um, a mobile quarterback? And you have insisted on quarterback run game, have had a history of success sure. in doing that. Of course, the downside is the risk to injury. And, sure. and Dylan's already had a, what was it, a collarbone? A I collarbone, yeah. 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 
Get into that, if you will. Yeah, D Dylan's going to be able to be very capable to make plays with his feet when he needs to. You know, he's a guy that can obviously make every throw. He's incredibly accurate. He's got great anticipation. Uh, but he's a guy that can also make plays with his feet. So we'll put him in those situations when needed. Uh, but keeping him upright and keeping him clean is going to be a huge deal for sure. Why was he target number one? It seemed like from the outside, yeah. goal number one for you. Yeah. Let's get that guy. Yeah, because because I know who he is to the core. You know, felt like I, I had an understanding of what we needed in our locker room. And Dylan's a guy that was able to bring that day one, just an incredible amount of consistency on who he is from a day-to-day -day standpoint. And then being able to understand exactly what the expectation was of being a quarterback. And knowing how, man, you got to spend more time in the building than anybody else. We can't ask guys to be in here if we're not in here ourselves. And, and he was bought into that as an 18-year-old in Orlando. Knew it would be no different here. Uh, he's lived some great experiences that have got him to this point. And, and I knew he'd be incredibly humble and excited to be, man, be the face of, of Oklahoma football. So excited about where he's at and what he's doing and, and what he's going to do here these next four months. Is there an expectation that he would return, would play two years here, or where do you sit on that? Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a deal where we look up, you know, late December, early January, and we're sitting around the table having conversations and, and seeing exactly where we're at. You know, I, I do have a ton of confidence in his production and how he's going to play and how he's going to take care of the football. Uh, there's a ton of confidence there, and so with that, you know, comes some decisions. So we'll see how that all shakes out once we, once we get to that point. Oklahoma's had a great history of having incredible backup quarterbacks. It doesn't matter if you go back to Hibble or even Kyler Murray was a backup. Sure. You know, you, they've had a sure. history of it. Now, you've got a bunch of guys you ended up bringing in. Right. Am I correct with Bevel and Booty? And have you made a decision on the backup quarterback? H hadn't gotten all the way there from a decision standpoint. We feel really good about where we're at. We are much improved from the spring. The guys that were here in the spring, Nick Evers and Micah Bowens, both those guys have gotten a ton better. So excited about where those guys have gotten. Got to keep pushing. Got to continue to get better every single day. But man, they're bought into it, and they've been uh, they've they've been a light for us. They really have. Now I'm correct that Bevel wasn't here in the spring. That's right. Davis okay. in general were not here. Micah and Nick were. Yeah. Yep. So the question is at a quarter at the quarterback. You know, it's one thing for Gavin Sawchuck yeah. to not be here. Your your speedy true freshman back, uh, but it's another for a quarterback not to have been here. Your approach on that? Yeah, I, I think the thing that helps Davis is the fact that he's, he's got experience. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a guy that's played it, he's lived it, he's got understanding of ball and what it takes to, to play at this level. You know, him playing in the, you know, in, the, in the Peach Bowl last year was a huge deal as I'm watching that tape and evaluating him and, and just understanding that, man, he's taking snaps in really important football games. And so living that experience is a huge deal. He's got that, and that's, uh, that's helped him tremendously. Do you have the personnel to win big? I, I, I think no doubt about it. You know, I think we're built the right way offensively right now. I think we've got a really good chance to be really, really good up front. We've got to continue to get better. But if you've got a chance to be great up front, you've got a chance to be great as a football team. And so that's, that's where it's going to start for us and, and excited about where we're at. Jeff, the running back room, um, you, you've had, I mentioned Gavin Sawchuck not coming in until uh, the summer, I guess. Yeah. But I think he might have been in the playbook and, and up to speed. Yeah. Um, what about your, your running back room beyond Eric Gray? Yeah, I think Marcus Major is, yeah. is a guy that, you know, when you've, when you've seen flashes of him play on Saturdays, people have been very excited about right. what he's been able to do. Marcus has put together three of the most consistent months of, I think, his, his young life. Uh, this, this guy, is, he's been solid, man, and solid as a rock. He is ultra-talented. We all know that, but he's healthy. He feels good. He's been locked in and dialed into what we're trying to get done offensively every single day. And so excited, uh, excited about where he's at and where he's going. Javante Barnes, I saw him on a bicycle, the first media opportunity to come into practice. So I'm yeah. over there on a bicycle, and he's missed – quite a bit of stuff, but boy, he sure seems talented yeah. and, uh, and versatile. He, he is. He can do a lot of different things. He's got a great body type. He's got great top end speed, and he's a kid that, uh, again, understands ball. He's got really good knowledge of the game, and, uh, and he's worked his butt off to put himself in a position to be able to help and help early. So excited about where he's at as well. And you're planning to be utilizing that speed and the abilities of Sawchuck 
Well, yeah, I mean, Gavin, again, is a guy that had, he had a really good fall camp. So I think the deal is, is there's one football, you've got to find different ways to get people involved. And as this thing plays out, we'll see where, uh, where, he, where he ends up. You know, there's several terrific receivers that are not here, that, that could have been here, that are not here, right. or that you just, oh, you just lost by uh, uh, moving on. Uh, but that room still looks pretty solid. Yeah. And, and um, I always looked at last year and just said, Marvin Mims, had him a really big first year, not much last year, yeah. but he seems like a, a difference maker. He, he is a difference maker. And Marvin, again, Marvin's a guy that's created great consistency inside that room with how he operates, how he acts, how he leads, and then how he's produced, you know, all spring and then all fall camp. So couldn't be more excited about where he's at and what he's going to be able to go get done for us. Uh, but we've got a good room. I think there's a little more depth than people may think. Um, you know, there's not a ton of production coming back, but there's guys that are incredibly capable. And so when you've got that, you've got to go live experience and you've got to go get some experience early. But we've got guys in that room that got a chance to be special. Well, and two of them are, of course, the people love talking about uh, six, five receivers who yeah. are fast and are, are, are rookies. And you got one in Jaden Gibson and then curious also about Theo Weiss, your two bigger guys. But how about Gibson? Yeah, Jaden's done a great job of making competitive plays. You know, as, as a young guy coming in in the spring and then through fall camp, he's a guy that naturally understands how to high point the ball. He's got good body control when the ball's in the air, so can go make plays on it. Theo, I think, is feeling as healthy and, and feeling as good as he, he's felt in a long time. So, again, he's worked himself into, into having a great fall camp and excited about where he's at. Nick Anderson is the, is the other one, you know, that's a big guy that's physically mm -hmm, yeah. imposing and and can really, really run. So uh, again, excited about all three of those guys. Well, finally, uh, Jeff, the uh, offensive coordinator role. I've always said that they are, they have uh, more inquiry. They have more second guessing than a governor uh, or about anyone. You know, it, it's just a tough job to be a coordinator, yeah. especially offensive coordinator. What what's made you successful, and and how do you handle inevitable criticism that not you will have, yeah. but every offensive coordinator has? Yeah, I think that the reason I'm able to sit here today is because I've been around great people. Yeah. You know, we've got an incredible offensive staff, we got incredible young coaches in the room, and we've got a really good locker room. And so, with that, gives me all the confidence in the world to be able to go operate at a really high level and and continue to to be dominant here offensively. Jeff, thanks and. Uh, Great start so far, and I know we don't kick off now for a couple more days, but uh, yeah. so far so good, and it's great to have you back in, uh, in the area. Well, great, Dean. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. Bet.